there was some crazy people about. This guy used to bang on my door every night, shouting, Wayne, Wayne, <laughs> I take you to the bar now. So guys, welcome back to the channel once again, touching down from a very breezy and a little bit cooler Chiang Mai city in Northern Thailand as always down in Wat Chedi Luang having my morning walk and I thought we could have another chat um, there's a lot going on down here today actually so I'm gonna put the mask back up I might take it down put it up as we go around if I don't see anyone I will whip it down again there used to be a building here that I used to rest Black Beauty on while I walked around but they've knocked it all down and it looks like they're going to do some groundwork and build something else, no doubt. It's a nice breeze now. Every day we've got this strong breeze and it's just making it so much cooler. It's still about 30, 30 every day, but with the breeze, you don't sweat so much. The workmen come here and have their water and cup of tea. Yeah, I was surprised on one of my last videos when I said I'm going to do a vlog about my story and how I came to the Philippines and Thailand. I just said it off the cuff and yeah, I was surprised by the amount of comments I had that wanted to hear that and see a video about that. I mean, that was just something I said and didn't really, didn't really think about. I thought I would do a vlog about it at some point in the future, but I had good feedback off it people wanted to just hear the story it's not much of a story anyway but I thought we could just have a chat about that today and I could roll back the years a little bit and have a chat about how I'm here why I'm here and how I decided Thailand man I thought I'd come down here and do a quiet little vlog and it's all happening down here today a lot of things happening and what's something going on over there as well? Might be a funeral or something. Not quite sure what it is. But they've got something set up. We're going to keep out of it. Yeah, so I, I never used to like traveling. I was always a home bed. I was always my little town sort of guy. I never wanted to leave that town. I was an introvert and never wanted to go nowhere man my friends had to push and shove me to go anywhere and yeah i just grew up living for the weekends like most people do you you work monday to friday and just wait for that friday night to go out and spend all your money down the clubs and that was my life man if anybody said traveling or go go somewhere like thailand i'd be no way man why do i want to do something silly like that I'm, I'm ready for Friday night and going out clubbing. One of my best friends was a traveler. He used to go away every year. He used to go to the Philippines or Costa Rica or somewhere just to get away for that Christmas time. And that's, that's how I started traveling really. Um, I've not been everywhere. There's loads of places I've not been. I, I wouldn't call myself a real big traveler by any means. The first place I ever went to was Greece, Crete on a lads holiday as you do being english you always go on a lads holiday clubbing and partying it up and i remember going to crete that first time i was like a fish out of water going to that holiday man i was absolutely bricking it because so i've never really been away from where i live i'm from a small town don't forget a very small town in the southwest of england even going to a city when i was a kid was a big thing it was massive, it, it just felt weird and I didn't like it going to London and places like that because I was not brought up somewhere like that at all. So going to Greece was a, was a major breakthrough and yeah, I, I would actually say I hated it. <laughs> this is the first time I've been abroad. I was with friends that, you know, they liked to the drink and it was just one big party party all night sleep all day I was in a foreign land didn't know the money didn't know the people and Greece still now is not one of my favorite places so just putting a mask back on a minute 
as the monks are about here. There's a lot of action going on down here today, so sorry guys. Probably gonna be stopping and starting. Sweaty cab. Um, yeah, then after that is when I went to France. That was one of the best times I've ever had when I went to France. I was unemployed at the time and I just basically got in the back of my friend's um, van and we, we drove. Drove from England all the way down through France and into Spain as well. And we were just camping every night and that was, I think that was the main holiday that really got me hooked. Yeah, I, I had no money hardly and I just said, let's go. I got a tent that I've had for years home in the attic and took my tent with me, took a bag of clothes and we was off, man. We was off driving right down through France. Yeah, that really gave me the buzz for going further afield. But France, oh, France is amazing. If, none of, if nobody's been to France, you need to check it out. France reminds me of Thailand a little bit. The rural areas of France are so quiet and tranquil and, you know, you can just drive down roads for miles and it's just fields and nothing about. And even some of the cities are just small, tranquil cities. I mean, when you get to the south of France, I always say the south of France is totally different from the rest of France. The south of France might as well just be another world, man. I didn't like the south so much, but the north of France and driving down through France was amazing. And yeah, France is always one of my favorite places. I was hoping it would be quiet today and it's not. We ain't even got on to Philippines or Thailand yet. This was meant to be a five or 10 minute vlog, man. Yeah, so I was just knocking around in unskilled work, really, guys, back home. Um, where I'm from, you got to take whatever you can get, whether it's factory work or out on a building site. Um, I've done bits of everything, you know, bits of labouring for people and labouring for family in the factories. I've done it all, like hairspray factories, no good for me. <laughs> uh, pencil factories, making pencils and deodorant rubbish like that after that i just used to save 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 and save save uh, i was still going out at the time still going partying oh come across a dog here that isn't too happy by the looks of it yeah then the big one happened we went to the philippines man the philippines was the first big big place for me and yeah we went to the philippines i forget how old i was now I wasn't young, it was, it was not too long ago, 10 years ago. The first long flight I ever had, and I, I was ready to kill someone on that flight, man. I just want to get out of that air. Same with coming to Thailand now, I hate anything over five hours. It's just a nightmare for me. And they pack you in like sardines as well, don't they? Got a bit of construction going on. He's finished his break now. Finish his break. So, where was I? The flights, yeah, long haul flights. Still hate them. Um, I This was the first time I came to Thailand where I took a direct flight all the way. I think I prefer the um, stop offs, you know. When I go back or go anywhere else, I'm gonna have a stop off. Just that little bit of, it takes longer, of course, and it's more hassle. But just that, that bit of break you get where you land, have a bit of a layover and get on the next part of the flight. I like that more, I think, than just in the sky all the time. How are you, ladies? Yes, you're Are you from Chiang Mai City? No. Oh, you're here on holiday? Yes, from Bangkok. Oh, you're from Bangkok. Nice to meet you. You're on YouTube now, okay? Lately? Yeah, you're on YouTube. What's your channel name? Walk about Wayne. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. See you. Bye. See you. <laughs> See you. Take care. See you. I met some nice girls there on vacation from Bangkok. So somebody is doing the domestic traveling. Somebody's come here for two weeks. So people are arriving here. 
Let's say the Philippines. When I touched down in Manila, before I went to the Philippines, I was bricking it actually. Because, you know, I, I looked up everything before I went and you hear the stories about, there was a famous pirate there at the time actually that was um, taking foreigner hostages <laughs> in, in the place where I was going, South Palawan. That didn't make me too easy when I heard, I forgot his name now, I think he was called Rat or something. I, I did read later on that he died in prison. Famous pirate that was kidnapping a lot of people. And it was a dodgy place when I got there, but I settled in. When I touched down in Manila, I thought, oh my days, what is going on? Because when I arrived in Manila, the Philippines, they were doing an armed robbery on a bank. <laughs> I spent most of my time in Palawan which is an absolute beautiful island. If anybody knows Palawan in the Philippines, well, lots of places in the Philippines are beautiful. I was only in the Philippines for two, two and a half months, I think, that time. And um, we spent half of that in Palawan and just, you know, El Nido, if anybody knows El Nido, the top of Palawan, absolute paradise, man. And yeah, it was a great place and I've grown to love it. It's a lot more different than Thailand, I think. I know a lot of you guys have done Philippines in Thailand, so it will be good to hear all your stories on the differences. Yeah, the Philippines was probably the best travel experience I've ever had. Um, we chilled out on the Palawan Island and had a great time. There was, there was some crazy people about. This guy used to bang on my door every night shouting, Wayne, Wayne, <laughs> I take you to the bar now. And the police would come and the police were scared of some of these guys in Palawan. It was like, there's not really any law going on. You can't have him banging on your door all day long now and all night, can you? Well, I'm an introvert guy. I like my own space, same in Thailand. I like my own time and my own space. And you know, especially if you've got a girl with you or something, you don't want some guy banging on the door. <laughs> Wayne! Wayne! <laughs> I always remember that. That will stick with me forever. I never wanted to come to Thailand. Thailand was always too commercial. I always wanted to go back to the Philippines. I thought, nah man, Thailand, everybody goes to Thailand. That'll be boring. I want to go back to the Philippines again. And we were planning and saving to go back to the Philippines. My friend has been there and back many times and um, yeah I never got to go back again I, I got back into work kept saving for the Philippines and yeah never went back I got a full-time job in the end and then then I started reading about Chiang Mai online and I remember I ended up telling my mate like if you read about this Chiang Mai place it's really cheap and chilled out um, a lot of people go there that's the thing that um that's the thing that put us off yeah, I kept reading and reading and reading about it. And in the end, I thought, we got to check it out. So we came here. Yeah, we went straight to Niman. You know, when you first read up about Chiang Mai, Thailand, it's, it's normally Niman, right? You normally, right, we'll go to Niman. Came straight to Chiang Mai from Bangkok and stayed at Niman, Ban Thai in Niman. One of the cheapest places in Niman Road. And yeah, it was like a hospital room. I think it still is. I got a mate that stayed there not long ago and it, he said it was still just basically a white room with a hospital bed. <laughs> but it was cheap for where it is as well. It's a great cheap option. When people message me on here about cheap places in Niman, I always recommend Ban Thai because of the location and how cheap it is. I mean, you can always spruce a room up, right? You can always decorate it or put some pictures up here and there make it a little bit better and I ended up moving to Chiang Rai that's where I went to that's when I went to Chiang Rai and lived for six months I had a great time in Chiang, Chiang Rai that is my favorite place in Thailand so far I've not been everywhere I only been up the north the north is where I like to be and yeah I love Chiang Rai this is where I'd like to retire in the future Chiang Rai if I do retire in Thailand, that's a whole new never vlog. It got boring in the end. I ended up meeting a girl from Chiang Mai in Chiang Rai. And I remember getting the bus back with her. I came back with her, we started dating. I got a 
got an apartment near her room and I stayed there for a while guys and then I went home again I went home done some more work went back to work as you do earning some more do re mi then yeah me and my mate come to Thailand again <laughs> we came back to Thailand and straight to Chiang Mai we just done five or six months here again you know done done the partying I was into partying then and going to the bars and meeting some ladies yeah then I went home again that's when a light switch switched in my head and I thought right no more partying no more going out I'm you know I'm getting to 40 now I'm in my 40s and yeah I always remember the day when I was I was in my local nightclub where I've been going all my life from when I was young I mean the town where I'm from there's only a few nightclubs I remember just standing on the side you know every nightclub's got one of them side bits where you stand with your drink and watch the dance floor the people that always don't want to dance or the people perving out on the girls <laughs> yeah I was one of them that night and I just remember standing on the side and thinking to myself this ain't for me anymore I need to be traveling I need to be in Thailand Thailand is where I want to be and I always say that moment in that nightclub that was the defining moment that changed me that that changed me I just had enough I think it happens to all of us right especially the guys when when you're getting older I mean I was still going out all my mates were married I was nearly 40 I was still living like a 20 year old there was a new generation of people out in the clubs I've probably been through two new generations of people out and about in the clubs then I knew I wanted to be away from England and from this day onwards I know that was always what I wanted to do and just wish we could all know that sooner right I always thought why didn't I think of it sooner why didn't I but you're too young then right and you're you're into partying and I would never change all the partying I've done I really enjoyed it but with age comes wisdom right you get wise as you get older and yeah that defining moment I really knew that I just wanted to come back to Thailand and stay here for as long as possible I was kicking about back home not doing nothing not happy I was in a job just I was getting things wrong like messing up the machinery because my head was just all about coming back here it must have been about five or six years in between this time and the last time I come here and I just I had that plan all the time get more money get more money get more money I mean I could have come sooner but I always wanted that little bit more do a little bit more work then you could stay longer in Thailand I had enough of it back home I, I just couldn't stick it there anymore I'm not hating on it I will go back there and I will get back to work there one day This is a cool coffee shop too. If you want to get away from everything, come to the Wad Chedi Luang coffee shop. Because normally it's not like this. Normally there's nobody around at all. Yep, I got that one-way ticket. After so many years, I couldn't wait no more. I got that ticket and I'm glad I did because four months after I got it, COVID hit, man. So... Some people might say that's bad timing or good timing, but that was good timing for me. If, if I didn't go then, I would have probably still been at home now, people. I would have been at home waiting for, waiting for this December to come back here or November. I would have still been home. And yeah, I'm, I'm so glad I made that decision right then to do it. And yeah, been here ever since, eh? Been here ever since. That was a long story, Wayne. That was a lot of waffling and yapping. I'm gonna have to cut this down because people are gonna be complaining, man. <laughs> yeah, I am getting a bit more noticed around the city now, which I don't really like, but it's my own doing and got nobody else to blame about that. I've seen a guy yesterday. If you're watching, obviously you must watch because I didn't have a clue who he was, man, and you were shouting my name and so obviously you must watch the channel um, somebody on a moped on a scooter let me know if it was you coming down inside of the city 
I had another guy come up to me saying, Wayne, how are you, buddy? And I was like, who are you? And he was like, you don't know who I am? I mean, obviously I don't know who you are, guys. <laughs> obviously I don't know who you are if you come up to me in the street. I only see you in words and maybe a profile picture. And yeah, obviously I'm not going to know who you are if I see you in the street. You're going to have to, you're going to have to explain to me if I look a bit dumbstruck. You're going to have to say, look, I'm so-and-so from on YouTube. If you say a name and that you've commented before, I'll, it'll probably twig with me. Help I come across just a normal guy, like the guy next door or a mate on holiday. When some of you say that, uh, it really makes me happy because that's all I am. I'm just the guy next door. I'm just a guy that makes mistakes in Thailand and doesn't know it all. Doesn't want to know it all either and just just whips his camera out and talks to you guys like a real person. So yeah, take it easy and I will see you in the next one. So take it easy, man. Take it easy.